And now we turn to Luke 2. Yesterday in Luke, Mary visited Elizabeth, and we read Mary's song of praise. And after that, John's father, Zechariah, prayed his prophetic prayer. Our first reading in Luke 2. At that time, Emperor Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the Roman Empire. When his first census took place, Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone then went to register himself, each to his own hometown. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the town of Bethlehem in Judea, the birthplace of King David. Joseph went there because he was a descendant of David. He went to register with Mary, who was promised in marriage to him. She was pregnant, and while they were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have her baby. She gave birth to her first son, wrapped him in cloths, and laid him in a manger. There was no room for them to stay in the inn. There were some shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields, taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. They were terribly afraid, but the angel said to them, Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to all the people. This very day in David's town your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great army of heaven's angels appeared with the angel, singing praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven! and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them back into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph, and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told them what the angel had said about the child. All who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. The shepherds went back, singing praises to God for all they had heard and seen. It had been just as the angel had told them. A week later, when the time came for the baby to be circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name which the angel had given him before he had been conceived. The time came for Joseph and Mary to perform the ceremony of purification, as the law of Moses commanded. So they took the child to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male is to be dedicated to the Lord. They also went to offer a sacrifice of a pair of doves or two young pigeons, as required by the law of the Lord. At that time there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God-fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him and had assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple. When the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required, Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise and you may let your servant go in peace. For with my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. 
The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon had said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, the child's mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts. And sorrow, like a sharp sword, will break your own heart. Please pray with me today. Our sovereign God, our Creator, and the God who has loved us, even sending your Son, Christ Jesus, to die for us, Lord, thank you for the book of Job. One thing that we can learn is that we should not condemn others and say they are being punished by you. Help us also, Lord, in seeing the sufferings of others that we would not judge them, that we would not say that you are punishing them when we know nothing about the situation. And when we ourselves are suffering, may we never imagine, Lord, that you hate us or that you are punishing us in an unfeeling way. Instead, you may be correcting us. And you have given us much insight that Job didn't have throughout the rest of the Bible as to your purposes. We pray that you would make us wise and ready to listen to you in every situation. Lord, forgive us for our arrogance when we strut about and pretend to know all about you. For you are awesome, and your wisdom and your power is so much beyond what we can think or imagine. Thank you for giving us so much more than Job had, a Savior who has died for us, and the Holy Spirit who has come to live within us. Lord, I thank you for the wonderful words of Simeon when he held the Lord Jesus in his arms. We thank you that our Savior is a light that will reveal your will to the Gentiles, and through him you have glorified the people of Israel. And his words were so perceptive when he said, Jesus will be a sign from God which many people will speak against, and so reveal their secret thoughts. Lord, that is still happening today. We pray that in this world we might be representatives of Christ and that you will give us wisdom at every opportunity to answer people when we see them reveal their secret thoughts.